but my name is Stan Lundeen, and actually, I'll—I yeah. hadn't intended to do this, but I'll tell you a story. I—I uh, I had a really interesting time learning about all of New York State, being a country guy from up here, and, and I was out on Long Island representing the governor one day, and everybody was mad about one thing or another and I finally I had one dinner speech to give and we were running late and I knew the worst thing you could possibly do is come and if the crowd has already finished their dinner is come and eat in front of them but I needed something just to get by so I asked the driver would you stop and I, I'll get a candy bar or something and I walked into this gas and go place, and this very attractive woman said, You must be Stan Lundeen. And I said, Yes, I am. And how did you know? Did you see me on television? And she said, No. And I said, Did you see my photo in, in Newsday in news uh, or something? And she said, No. I said, well, how did you know? She said, you left your name tag on. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of humbling experiences like that in my public life. But I want to thank all of you for two separate reasons. One, because you've obviously given generously to the Jackson Center. And two, because you're here tonight. I think it's very important that we gather, those of us who support the work of the center, that we gather at least once a year to assess where we are, where we intend to go, with this fantastic legacy and supporting the principles that Robert H. Jackson stood for and, and how important they are in the world today. The Jackson Center is making great strides to continually expand our programming and particularly in the area of education. In the coming year we have new teacher initiatives that the board just reviewed today and I think the educational mission of the center is going to be even more important than it's ever been before. We'll have summer workshops, traveling exhibits, online learning tools, and of course our digital archives are used by students and scholars around the world to continue to be a growing resource for study, along with special exhibits and offerings in this beautiful facility. We're consciously reaching out to similar-minded institutions. We just, I think Greg mentioned, had a great event in Cleveland, and we intend to follow up with that with uh, uh, an event in Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, one in Buffalo, and, and in New York City uh, before this year is even over to have an impact on the national and international stage. This reach is limitless when you think about our online uh, presence. There's an ever-growing online community such as our Facebook page with fans from over 30 countries our YouTube channel with videos that exceeded one million hits that Greg might have also mentioned, and a Twitter feed uh, with in-the-moment news items and a website with over 2,000 visitors a day. So um, our, our reach is even greater than ever before, and we're continually working on it. We are in a search for a new CEO, and it's progressing steadily. I, I'm very sorry that our vice chair, Joe Zanetta, couldn't be here today. He wanted to very much, but he's chairing that search and doing a, a great job. And we have um, both board members and some uh, other supporters who are involved in that. And I'm convinced that we're going to find an executive that will lead us to an even brighter future in, in, in uh, the coming weeks and months. And that will complement the work of our fellow directors and especially 
uh, our leader, Greg Peterson, who will continue to be our leader, whether he has the title of president or not, he will continue to be our leader, at least when it comes to the programming of this center. Uh, he is irreplaceable, in my opinion. With all of this happening, uh, our co uh, collective philanthropic contributions are more important than ever. The economy has presented a challenge to us. Some of the foundations that traditionally have supported this center uh, are stressed and uh, it's difficult to sustain the contributions from those centers. So uh, back years ago, I'm told that uh, in Chicago, the politicians would say, vote early and often. Well, I'm asking you tonight, give early and give generously. We need your contributions before the end of the year. We ask that you give as much as you're able to because uh, our directors have a 100% commitment that we're going to contribute and we're going to match your contributions up to a total of $100,000 this year. So, we will retain our $500 uh, amount for Jackson Society membership, but we're also looking at creating thresholds of $1,500, $5,000, uh, $10,000 contributions, and we hope that we'll be able to find some people who are able to contribute. So as we enter the next 10 years I, I, of the center's life, I'm very optimistic, I'm very positive. I think this is something of a transition year, but we're going to be positioned much stronger as we go into 2012 and beyond. And so I want to thank you again for generously supporting uh, this organization and its mission. I know that you'll rise again uh, to meet the challenge with enthusiasm and benevolence. And so I thank you in advance for your uh, commitment and your contributions to the Robert H. Jackson Center. <laughs>